Hi, my name is Jeremy Honnold. I get to be a sales engineer for Ramco Innovations. I recently got an email from a customer that was having a sensing problem that was adversely affecting their production goals. So much so that they were at risk of losing a contract with a customer. Here is that email that I have permission to share. Hi, Jeremy. We are facing challenges with our assembly process due to incorrect diameter parts being used in two specific assemblies. This has caused disruptions, delays, and quality issues. Our production goals are consistently falling short and we suspect the usage of incorrect parts and potential bottlenecks are contributing factors. We need some assistance in finding a solution to verify part diameter and prevent incorrect part usage. Additionally, we are interested in identifying and resolving bottlenecks or inefficiencies in our process. We seek some guidance in impl implementing a practical solution. After visiting the customer, I learned that the correct diameter part for this assembly is 8 millimeters, and sometimes another part from another assembly process that is around 10 millimeters gets mixed in. Although a measurement array could work well for this application, they really wanted to implement a cost-effective, operator-friendly solution that would provide a good, bad output with local indication, as well as provide trending data for production managers and quality control to determine the best ways of improving this process. Okay, let's start off by going to our website and looking at the parts we need for this application. We can go over here to Shop Online, Sensors, and I think uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the fiber optic cables. Uh, I want to select by key attributes and I want to pick an array beam. And here's an Optex NFTS 40, a 40 millimeter beam, so let's click on that. So it's a 40 millimeter wide array. Here's some dimensions, that's about perfect for what we're looking for right now. And uh, you can see here it's got a 0 0.4 millimeter uh, resolution, which is uh, well within the uh, rated uh, specs for this application. So we'll go ahead and add that to the cart. And continue shopping. And then let's go back to shop online again. Sensors and fiber optic amplifiers. And there's a number to choose from, but I kind of want to look at uh, an aisle link for sure. And let's just select that. And here is a D4RF, that's a cable type. And here's an M84 pin type. So let's, let's take a look at that one. So that's our new advanced fiber optic amplifier with an OLED display. Let's go ahead and add that one to the cart. Let's continue shopping. Now let's go and look at the IOLink Master. So the IOLink Master that I want to use for this application is made by Banner. So Banner Engineering and uh, we'll go over here to IOLink Solutions. And on this IOLink Solutions page we've uh, listed a, a quite a few of the uh, Banner IOLink options that correlate to the Snap Signal product line from, from Banner Engineering, some very powerful stuff. And the first one here on this list is the DXMR90 uh, four port IOLink master controller. And we're gonna have uh, essentially four, at the most, four ports to start off with. The nice thing about this is it's definitely uh, scalable. So um, we'll go ahead and uh, select that. It comes with an ethernet cable and uh, let's see, here's a key thing to point out. Can provide local control and send data to PLC, SCADA systems, or directly to the cloud. So that's perfect in this particular case because at this point we really don't want to get a separate PLC uh, involved or, or uh, mess with the existing programming structure of everything. So an overlay system where we can do some control is exactly what we're looking for. So we'll go ahead and put that in the cart. Continue shopping. And then the next thing we're going to look at, this is a new product from Banner Engineering. 
and uh, it is the Okay, it's the K50 Pro Compact Touch with IO-Link. And you can kind of see right here, it's got the digital display, and it's got a, a lights, and it's got a lot of functionality. So this will be very, very nice for local indication. So we'll go ahead and, and add that to the cart. There'll be some miscellaneous cables and things, but uh, for, uh, for the purpose of mocking this up, I think that's basically what we need. So let's go ahead and and uh, get this all set up. Okay, so here is the D4RF fiber optic amplifier from Optex FA. Uh, this is the IO link output that we selected and I've currently got this uh, set up at one of the faster response times and you can see it's a really nice display. It may not come through real well on the camera uh, because of the shutter speed but wow it is easy to see and a couple of really cool things about this uh, about this sensor because it's an OLED display it reads out in full words what everything is supposed to be. Display, timer, response time, output mode, etc., etc. So it makes it extremely easy to go in and set up different things. So light on, for instance, dark on, that kind of thing. It's fantastic. Um, you really don't even need a manual to, to teach it, and you certainly don't need a cheat sheet to figure out what all the different codes and things mean. So. Anyway, that's one thing I really, really like about this uh, uh, fiber amplifier. But now we've got the fiber optic amplifier connected to another awesome product. This is made by Banner Engineering, and this is the DXM R94K. So it's the uh, IO-Link Master, a part of the Snap Signal product line from Banner. And this is a four port. I've got the first port connected to the D4RF. And I have the fourth port connected to the light. I'll show you in uh, just a second. And I've got an Ethernet port here where you could send the uh, the IO-Link information and control data and control information through Modbus TCP, Profinet, or Ethernet IP, or directly to the cloud. So it's pretty pretty awesome. Okay, so this is the setup with the K50 light. It's going to look a little blown out because of just the way cameras work, but uh, you can see it's a display and it shows the value on the display uh, and that's the incident light level. And then down here I've got the uh, NFTS uh, 40 uh, array fiber cables, 40 millimeter beam. And I've got those connected into the amplifier, obviously. Uh, and I just sort of quickly design and 3D printed out this little bracket just to use as a, a way to, to mock this up and, and prove things out. And then we'll use this part here to represent the customer's part. It's obviously quite a bit different than this, but this will give you a good idea. So here is a 10 millimeter diameter part and here's an 8 millimeter diameter part. And so part comes along, the wrong part gets put into place, let's see the output light turn on, and it'll be this red. The 8mm part comes in, it'll be green. And in this case, it's green all the way through. So from the operator's standpoint, it's very easy to tell, okay, there's a bad part that just passed through here. Uh, the the control uh, on the on the IO link can also be set up to send an output signal and uh, kick the part off the line or whatever the case may be. It's pretty nice, simple, uh, repeatable way to sort parts in a 
you know, cost-effective manner. And of course, if you need tighter tolerances, uh, there are array measurement sensors and things like that as well that could easily also be incorporated into the same kind of system. Okay, so this is the DXM configuration software from Banner. And the first thing you do is you go to this tab here, it says connect to the DXM. Uh, we're going to select the subnet to scan. And of course you have to set up your IP address on your uh, PC for the correct uh, subnet. But we're going to scan. And there it goes, it found a DXM R94K. This is the default IP address for the, uh, for the DXM. It's 192.168.0.1. And just connect to that. And then you're going to go up here to the DXM and you're going to get configuration from the DXM. In this case, because I've already, uh, I've already set up the program. We'll just call it that and here are all the local registers in use and this is the action rules and the main thing I want to show on here are the threshold rules that I that I set up so the first one is this threshold rule it says when local register 1002 so what this is is port 1 uh, register to and it is the incident light level from the fiber optic amplifier so whenever that incident light level is greater than 5000 what we're going to do is we're going to take and write 3328 to this register here 4058 which is uh, the K50 uh, the K50 IO link uh, light and display and 3328 correlates to the white light. And then the other one, threshold level, and we're going to, of course, take the same uh, number, 1002, which is the incident light level, and whenever it's less than 4300, we are going to set 4058 to the number 256, and 256 correlates to red. So when the value or the incident light level drops below 4300, uh, the light will turn red, and that will designate that the, the, the part within the beam is the 10 millimeter part. Whenever there's no part in the beam, the number on the display will be greater than 5000, and it'll be uh, the white light. And whenever the, the any, other, uh, any other condition is in place then the green light will be on because that's the what I set for the default but in other words the 8 millimeter part will show green the 10 millimeter part will show red and when there's no part present it'll show white one of the nice features of the DXM uh, 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 software and the DXM R90 snap signal products is that you have quite a lot of functionality as far as getting trend data. So if you want to take uh, how often the, the wrong part is, gets put in place or how long the wrong part is put in place, you can set this up here and say record the number of minutes that the rule has been true. And uh, you can send that to this register, whatever register you set and then you can take that and send that to your SCADA system or you can take that to the cloud and it uh, gives you a lot of uh, potential uh, data and information that, that someone could use to determine okay how long has this machine had a jam condition how often are the parts uh, the wrong parts put in place you could set up rules account every time the wrong part has been put in place and record that data and in fact, with some the, the right kind of trending information, you could have exactly what time of day and those types of things could all be logged and uh, sent to the cloud or sent to a SCADA system. So it's pretty powerful and great for being able to determine what processes are we having trouble with, what things can we improve in order to make this machine better and work better and allow us to, to get our production goals met. So. A couple other things here. Um, I'm not going to go over everything, but this, uh, this again, this number, that incident light level, 
Now I'm sending it also to this 4056, copying it and sending it to this register. What that is, is on the, on the K50 light, it'll actually display the incident light level from the amplifier right on there. So that's kind of cool. And of course you could also take and again, write that to the cloud or write that number uh, to a SCADA system and sort of compare a trend over time to see, uh, to see, you know, how, how tight a tolerance are you actually getting on the parts. Uh, if you wanted to get more accurate, you could put a laser measurement sensor in there, have this number be the actual measurement value that gets put in there, and then you could really do some, do some trending and some graphing with that as well. Uh, a couple other things, I did put some math rules in here, and, and mainly that's, I'm not showing that here, but this, this light's really, really cool in that it has a dynamic indicator. Uh, which would allow you to say as the value increases, the display will light up uh, clockwise or counterclockwise and even change different colors d based on the value that it's given. So you can do some math and make some calculations that way. That would be perfect for, you could have some sort of uh, application where you've got a radar sensor and you may be looking at liquid level, uh, that type of thing, or maybe you've got a spool and you're unwinding a spool and you want to know, hey, how much time do I have before this thing's going to be empty and I have to doff the spool and put a new one on, those kinds of things. Uh, there's quite a few other little logic controls you could do, counting, trending, trackers, that kind of stuff. Okay, so here's the tools uh, section. And what this allows you to do is actually read the various registers and write to the various registers. So that one earlier, 4056, that corresponded to the uh, incident light level that's being displayed on the light. I can read that number, and like right now it's reading 7,005. So it, it's, fairly, it's fairly intuitive to, to uh, set up, and it's very powerful. For more information and assistance with your application, please reach out and visit us at ramcoi.com. Because we know empowered manufacturing engineers fuel business success.